Hello world, welcome back to Razer RC. Starting up a new series on my channel. Uh, this one is geared more towards beginners, uh, attempting to explain all the basics about RC cars, common settings you might have to make, uh, a little bit of maintenance, that kind of thing. So I thought I'd kick it off by uh, shooting a video talking about all the different parts on an RC car. So uh, before you can really talk about RC cars or understand how they work, uh, first thing you gotta understand is what are the different parts in an actual vehicle. So in front of us, we've got an ECX Amp MT. Uh, this is a really simple, basic two-wheel drive uh, monster truck. So makes for a really nice example of all the different parts on RC cars. So yeah, let's get into it. First off, uh, before we talk about the actual car, uh, this is the radio transmitter. Uh, this sends the signal actually to the RC car. Uh, generally two channels, throttle and steering. And then you got some adjustments up here, but this is how you actually control the RC car, obviously. That's the remote. In front of us, we've got the ECX Amp MT. This is the body held on by these little metal uh, tabs that are called body clips. Uh, generally, there's four of them holding them on, so that's how you take off the body. Body is generally made of Lexan. Sometimes I think PVC. I think this one's actually PVC, not Lexan, but uh, yeah, typically that's the material. Uh, obviously, wheels and tires. They are held on by wheel nuts. So, grab one for you. That's actually what it looks like. Generally, five and a half millimeters. So you need a five and a half mil, or I'm sorry, seven millimeters. <laughs> you generally need a seven millimeter uh, nut driver, is what this is called. So I've already removed all the wheel nuts. We can take off the wheels and tires, and then actually take a closer look at the actual vehicle. So we'll start at the front and kind of go through what all the different pieces are. So in the front, we've obviously got the bumper. These are the body posts that hold the body up and down. They're mounted to the shock tower here. So this is the shock tower, which actually holds the shocks up. Oftentimes you have different positions to mount the shocks in different locations. And then um, in the front end, again, we've got uh, the arms. So suspension arms, sometimes called A arms or H arms, uh, but these are the suspension arms. They articulate up and down give you that nice plush feeling when you're driving over the ground. And then you've got a couple different links. So this is actually what's called the camber link because it uh, controls uh, the camber of the car, which is how far the wheels kind of turn in and out. Uh, they, they tend to angle in a little bit, so that uh, link actually controls that. That makes it kind of like a double wishbone suspension. So you've got basically two arms, this upper camber link and this lower suspension arm that uh, move the wheel up and down like that. Now moving out to the outside, you've got what's called the spindle. So a lot of these terms are taken from automotive vehicles, obviously, uh, since this is a car. So this is the spindle, this is the wheel hex. Inside the wheel hex is a little uh, pin that goes through the axle here. So that's the drive pin and uh, wheel hex. These screws here are called the kingpin screws. So they go straight up and down through the spindle. Uh, that's again another automotive turn, term. And then finally you've got the steering link out here. So this controls uh, the steering so that you can like turn the vehicle left and right. You know, it's a little bit hard to turn actually on this one by hand. Um, and then you've got the shocks. So upper shock cap, shock body, shock spring. Uh, lower, what do we call this? The lower shock insert, or <laughs> I don't know, lower shock cap, whatever. I'm not sure. The shock shaft, uh, generally chrome or just polished steel. Uh, the shock cup or spring cup on the bottom. And then all the way on the bottom is the shock eyelet, which is what you attach down to the arm down there. So, uh, continuing in the front end, you've got uh, what's called hinge pins. There's, so there's little metal pins that go through the arms and connect them to the car. So that way these things can kind of hinge up and down. That's called the hinge pin. And they're generally connected to this thing right here, which has a lot of different terms. Sometimes they're called the hinge pin brace because they hold the hinge pins. Sometimes they're called the pivot block. That's what Lucy calls them because you know, the arms kind of pivot around them. Some people call it the bulkhead. Um, but yeah, it's uh, hinge pin brace, probably the most common term. And then uh, continuing in the front, you have like this upper chassis brace or upper front brace, uh, basically mounts on top of that. Uh, 
bolts to the main chassis here. So this is obviously the chassis, the, the whole bathtub style chassis. And then inside the steering, uh, there's a bunch of different components. So uh, there's basically these, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, there's these two arms down here. These are called the bell cranks because uh, they convert, you know, like one direction of turning to another. That's just kind of an automotive term again. Bell cranks, um, which connect the steering to the servo. So this is the servo. This is actually what turns the vehicle. So when it gets a signal from the radio, it, it sends it to this guy and this actually will turn the steering left and right. So on the steering system itself, as I mentioned, we have the bell cranks. Um, this little link right here connects the bell cranks to the servo arm or servo horn. So that's called the drag link. It's generally adjustable. Um, and then the servo horn itself, which is actually mounted to the servo. Now, sometimes you have what's called a servo saver. So this is actually what the bell cranks uh, look like underneath. Um, this servo saver actually allows the the servo and the wheels to change, move in different directions. So let's say you're trying to turn left and you're going around a corner and then you slam into a curb or something and the curb tries to make your wheels turn right, but your servo is trying to make the wheels turn left. Well, instead of just breaking your servo or breaking these plastic pieces, this little servo saver can actually give, it's like spring loaded. And that way the wheels and the servo can kind of move in different directions when you take a hard hit. Sometimes a servo saver is uh, mounted just directly instead of a servo horn. So like this one here made by Arma is an actual uh, servo saver horn. But it does the same function as the uh, servo saver on the bell cranks. Okay, and moving on to the actual chassis, you've got this little battery compartment with the battery strap on top, so that holds the battery in place. You've got the receiver, which receives signals from the radio. So when you're turning that steering wheel, when you're pulling the throttle, it sends a little signal to this guy. Uh, it's got an antenna. Now these generally have uh, a few different plugs. This one, for example, has uh, two main plugs. So basically a channel one and a channel two for steering and throttle. And then it's got like auxiliary channels for powering different things. So pretty much everything in your RC car, this is kind of like a little hub for power. So it provides power from the battery to the ESC. And then the ESC is connected to the receiver here through this wire down below. And so this little receiver's got power and it's sending power to everything else. So if you got a fan or lights or the steering servo, they all get power from this little receiver. So if your receiver actually uh, can't supply enough power, then um, you know that's when you get brownouts or glitching and that kind of thing. So that's the receiver, very important component there. Here's the ESC or electronic speed control. So this is what actually provides power to the motor, power to the receiver, and plugs directly into the battery through your battery cable here. And then you got a little on-off switch uh, and some motor wires. So brushed motors, you're gonna have two wires. Brushless motors, you're gonna have three wires and possibly what's called a sensor wire that goes to the motor that, that is actually checking the positions of the motor and that kind of thing. But this is a more simple one. This is just a simple brushed motor, uh, two wires. So that's the main chassis, what it looks like. And then in the back, you've got uh, similar things to the front. You've got the shock tower, uh, the shocks, of course, a body mount, or sometimes on a buggy, this will be used to mount the wing. So it'll be like a wing mount. Again, you've got the camber links back here, uh, drive shafts. So these control or send power to the rear wheels. Those actually obviously turn the wheels, as you can see here. There's a couple different styles. This is like a sliding plastic style. So you can kind of see this inner axle and this outer axle slide in and out. And then uh, they've got different types, what's called universals or CVAs or CVDs. So this is a universals. It's kind of got this ball style uh, pivoting on both ends. Universal style CVAs or stands for constant velocity axles or constant velocity drive shafts. Those would be CVDs. And then you got the rear hubs, rear hexes, of course, rear axles, rear suspension arms or A arms. This whole big piece right here is a, the transmission. It's got a little bumper here on the back. Um, inside are the top shaft, the idler gear, and the differential, and I'll show you that in a second. And yeah, so that's pretty much uh, the whole RC car in a nutshell. Those are all the different pieces. We'll get in the transmission now. 
Okay, we've got the transmission out of the car and now it's time to take a look at one of the great mysteries of RC and that is how do these transmissions work? What is actually in this thing? So uh, you've got what's called a gear cover. I've already put out the screws and you can remove that. So inside you've got a few different things. You've got what's called the spur gear. So these are the two main gears people talk about, the spur gear and the pinion gear. Pinion gear is attached to the motor, and so the motor spins a little pinion gear, and that's attached to the spur gear, which you know turns the rest of the vehicle. So the spur gear typically has what's called a slipper or slipper clutch. So uh, that actually slips, so allows the car to uh, protect the drivetrain in case the motor is moving at a different speed than the actual wheels. So these wheels and stuff will, will be spinning, but if your motor, you know, maybe you pull the throttle really hard, uh, there's too much power for the uh, drivetrain. Instead of the drivetrain braking, the slipper clutch will actually slip a little bit and allow it to um, you know, not grenade all these little plastic pieces and gears and stuff like that. So uh, let's remove the actual slipper. So there's a few different pieces. This is a slipper nut, slipper spring. You can tighten the nut to actually put more tension on the actual slipper uh, in case your slipper is too loose. And tighten it down or if in case it's too tight and it doesn't actually slip, then you want to loosen it a little bit. So let's go ahead and remove that. Slipper nut, slipper spring. These are the slipper plates and then the actual slipper pads. Uh, there's going to be one on each side. So these actually will wear down a little bit, sometimes get a little glazed. Um, you can kind of scrape off the edges of these to make it bite a little bit more. But um, yeah, pretty typical. Another slipper plate. And then this is the actual transmission. So I've actually already removed the screws. So we'll go ahead and pop off um, that guy right there and then open this thing up. So let's remove the little axle pin here so that way we can actually see what the transmission looks like all put together. So the transmission splits into two halves and this is what it looks like inside. A lot of different gears, some grease, that kind of thing. So there's basically three main gears inside of this thing. There's the top shaft which is what the uh, slipper was riding on back here. So as the motor spins, the pinion spins, the spur gear spins, this little top shaft spins, and then when you spin the top shaft, you can see that the other gears start turning. So the two other gears, this is what's called the idler gear. So it does, all it does is just spin. It's not really powered by anything. It just connects the top shaft gear to the differential gear. And then the differential gear is actually what's connected to your out drives and actually turns the wheels. So these all ride on bearings for nice and smooth uh, movement. So there's no binding or, or uh, resistance. And then this is the actual differential. So there's different types of differentials. Uh, there's ball differentials, there's gear differentials. Uh, what the differential uh, allows you to do is basically it allows the rear wheels to spin at different speeds. So when you're going around a corner, uh, the inside wheel and the outside wheel are actually traveling two different paths. So the outside wheel actually has to spin a little bit faster to go around that corner. The inside wheel will spin a little bit slower because it's traveling a shorter distance. Um, so that's what the differential allows you to do. And you can generally tune these things, uh, put in thicker oil if it's a gear differential or tighten it down if it's a ball differential. It just allows those wheels to spin at different speeds for a little bit better handling. So yeah, that's pretty much it what's inside the transmission. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna do more uh, videos in this series. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the add notification button, uh, share with your friends, and look for more videos soon. Thanks for watching.